Sportsnet is presented by Whataburger. The new one-of-a-kind honey barbecue chicken strip sandwich. Serve hot and fresh only at Whataburger. And by Toyota. Visit your local Toyota dealer today. Toyota, let's go places. We welcome everyone back. Astros fans here at the Big A, ready for the series finale where the Astros hope to grab a series win. We saw the Astros last night together. A very nice win here in Anaheim. Bremer Valdez with an absolute gem. It was handled by Martin Maldonado, who came up big with the bat. He was ready for a sweeper from Shohei Otani and hit it out for a two run home run to help the Astros win. Our no player does more is presented by HEB. Martin Maldonado, of course, hits down in that lineup in that nine hole. We've seen some production out of that nine hole. Five hits. They've collected five RBI as well, but two big swings you see there too. Of course, one of them coming from Martin Maldonado, David Hensley coming up as well. You saw Jake Myers in the middle of that swinging it well. He's trying to get it going again. Maldi in that spot again today, and he's feeling really good at the plate lately. Collected a hit in five of his last six. Made a couple adjustments, he said, that have been positive. A great sign for him and the team as they look to grab that series win, as I mentioned earlier, TK. Yeah, it'll be nice to get away with an off day tomorrow and even up this road trip at three games apiece. Here's the lineup for Dusty Baker on this Wednesday afternoon. Jeremy Pena back in there. A little different look to the lineup today. Alex Bregman, good numbers and limited sample size against Griffin Canning. Jordan Alvarez will play left field and back-to-back -back lefties in the lineup. We don't see that very often for the Astros. Kyle Tucker hitting fourth. Tucker's first game not in right field. He'll DH. Corey Jolks is in right. Yiner Diaz is at first. Jose Abreu's first day off. David Hensley in second. Jake Myers in center. Martin Maldonado behind the plate. We'll be facing Griffin Canning, right-hander out of Southern California. Grew up just down the road here at Mission Viejo. Members on the season in four starts, 2-0 with a 5.31. Getting a lot of help from his offense. He has faced the Astros in four starts also. He is 0-1, has a 9.22 ERA. The Astros as a team are hitting 316 against him. We're going to check out the pitch arsenal for Griffin Canning on our StackCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. You're going to see that slider and forcing fastball. Be the two popular pitches against right-handed hitters. You see that slider doing very good. That average right at the Mendoza line of 200. On the left-handed side, you're going to see that changeup jump in front of the slider. It's going to be a pretty even mix between the four-seamer changeup and the slider. Slider doing the best job at 250, but that changeup should be an interesting matchup against Jordan Alvarez this afternoon. We're ready to go. Jeremy Pena back in that top spot in the lineup. This is the 10th time this year he has hit leadoff. He had the first eight games as the leadoff hitter. Then Chaz McCormick took over that role for a while. And then Mauricio Dubon. And it took off and ran with it, but now Pena in there in the top spot. Goes out to the first pitch, hits it off the bag, barehanded by Brandon Drury. Quite a reaction by the second baseman for the Angel. Angels for that first out of the game. Kind of a crazy start. Jeremy aggressive early on, trying to punch that ball back up the middle. It ends up hitting off the bag, but Drury does a great job with the reaction and the bare hand. wake you up in a hurry day game after a night game for the Astros wearing their orange tops orange tops today as Alex Bregman having a nice series against the Angels four for eight so far coming off a three for 39 the previous 11 games before this series and he has been on base six of the seven times he has faced Griffin Canning Canning delivers a strike on the outside corner. The young rookie umpire Edwin Jimenez calling balls and strikes today. Bregman goes after the next pitch and pops it up. The shortstop Zach Neto is there. Bregman retired for the second out of the inning. Astros drop two out of three in Seattle. Lost the first game here in this series Monday, and last night snapped a three-game losing streak. Here's Jordan Alvarez. Alvarez had an RBI last night, improving his total on the year to 33 runs batted in. He's only played in 30 games on the season and has more RBIs than games played. Ninety-seven up high for a ball, one and zero. 
Stephen Canning has gone five innings in three of his four starts went five and a third in the other one. He has not gone deep into games on average this season only four starts on the season because he was on the IL the first 11 games with a left groin strain he had spent the entire 2022 season and final couple of months of 21 on the IL with a low back stress reaction. Well, he has not been healthy. For the Angels making his fifth start of the year. As he misses the inside edge against Jordan it's two and one. Jordan has reached in a. Major League season high 30 straight games matching Xander Bogarts for the longest on base streak of the season. Jordan's current streak goes all the way back to last year 34 in a row on base. Next closest to Jordan is Jerks and Profar who's been on base 21 straight times. Of the active guys. In the air pretty well hit to right field all the way back and gone. Into the seats above the old scoreboard which used to be the wall here at right field Jordan hits his eighth home run of the year. And extends that on base streak. To now 35 in a row. It's a nice start to the day game. Canning decided to challenge Jordan. He ends up hitting it 417 feet on her MD Anderson strike zone. You can see it be above the zone, but Jordan missed that previous fastball and said he wasn't going to miss the next one. And finds a way to get on top of 97 and go into launch mode. Mm. You might be looking. I know we're not. Quite a quarter into the season, we might be looking at a lead candidate for MVP. When you think about Jordan's numbers this year, consider he hasn't had a whole lot of protection behind him in the fourth spot. As Abreu has gotten off to a tough start, he's still putting up these kind of numbers. Today he's got Tucker behind him. We'll see if that impacts his afternoon as Tucker grounds one to the right side, bobbled, but the ball ends up right by the bag. Gio Urshela recovers and steps on it. But the Astros out in front, one nothing. One of the prettiest swings in baseball. He wanted to go get that fastball. Had to get up out of the zone to get it. But anything off that barrel is going to go a long way. It's the Astros ahead, one to nothing. Final game of this three game series. Series tied up one piece and Christian Javier is that right hander on the mound for your Houston Astros seven starts a 3.54 ERA. He's had some good outings against these Los Angeles Angels. Here's the lineup he will face Taylor Ward leading off Mike Trout hit second Shohei in the DH spot hitting third. Beyond that you've got Anthony Rendon Hunter Renfro and Brandon Drury. Bottom three are Matt Dice, Gio Urshela, and Zach Neto, two lefties in the lineup today against Christian Javier, who's had success against this top of the order. Taylor Ward has faced Javier seven times and has not put a ball in play. He's 0 for 6 with six strikeouts and a walk in his career against Javier. And that is a fastball that he swings through for a strike. It's one and two. has the top two guys in this lineup Ward and Trout in an 0 for 12 in their career with 10 strikeouts. Ward had a three hit game here on Monday night last night went 0 for as the Astros only allowed three hits in the game last night. That one just stayed inside Maldi tried to frame it up it's three and two. Got him again. Went upstairs with a fastball and Ward couldn't catch up. First out of the game is a strikeout for Javier. Astro starting defense is presented by Xfinity. Again, a little different looking lineup today with Kyle Tucker out of the defensive alignment for the first time this year. Corey Jolts makes his first start in right. Jake Myers in center. Jordan Alvarez in left. Yiner Diaz is going to play first base today for Jose Abreu. David Hensley in for Mauricio Dubon at second. Peña and Bregman on the left side and Maldi is behind the plate for Christian Javier. Mike Trout does not look 
lost against many pitchers in the major leagues but he has not had very good swings against Christian Javier. Yeah it's been some interesting at bats. Just amazing a guy of this caliber can have a couple of those pitchers around the league that he just can't figure out. And Christian Javier is one of those guys. Javier has struck him out on fastballs every time. He's got a head 0-2 on that last fastball. Try to get him to chase, but that was up around the shoulder blades. It's one and two. Yeah, you go back and look at the at bats and where you know the pitches are located. And the majority of them are at that top part of the zone. He'll move it in and out, but very rarely will you see him try and break anything down below the waist. There you go. Amazing. Following the blueprint against Trout. Back to back strikeouts to start the game for Javier as he gets Ward and Trout, two guys he's had a lot of success against. Yeah, and if it's working, you keep going to it until that hitter makes the adjustment. And Christian Javier, you can see that spin on that match from Supermo up in the zone and just Mike Trout cannot find that angle or that plane to get on to make contact with that pitch. One guy in the top three in the lineup who has had success against Javier is at the plate now. Shohei Otani, a couple of home runs against Javi in 13 career bats. He's four for 13. Took that first pitch for a strike. Now down and away for a ball, one and one. Kind of a great changeup. How about that? All right. And that's just for show, too. He doesn't have to. Put that on the plate or try and get a swing and miss or a rollover from Otani. He just wants to have something going away from him so that he can use that fastball and that slider curveball mix to get him to maybe take another swing and a miss right here and end this inning. But that elevated fastball early here on a bright, shiny day has been tough to see. Just missed the inside corner. Two and two the count. Javier faced the Angels twice last July. The first at home, the 13th on the road. He struck out 14 at Minute Maid Park, which was his career high. It still is. And then he struck out 10 here at Angel Stadium. Drops that next pitch below the zone, three and two. Javier making his second start on this road trip. Swing and a miss. He strikes out the side, getting Ward, Trout, and Otani all swinging. Christian Javier off and racing on a Wednesday afternoon. Find it on Twitter, which Astros player is the most important X factor for the team through May and early June. Jose Abreu, Alex Bregman, Mauricio Dubon, or JP France, who you're looking at there. He will start. Friday in Chicago and he is ready to go had a good chat with him you'll have to wait and hear what he said on Friday also guys Mauricio on this list it was good to hear from him after the game yesterday and then again this morning saying that he does feel a little bit better today does not expect to go on the IL not available for today's game and then to tomorrow will be a team off day good for him as well expects to be back in there on Friday if all goes well to get all right Julia Corey Jolks leading off. Takes the first pitch for a strike, facing Griffin Canning. Canning will celebrate his 27th birthday tomorrow. The Astros not quite at full strength today. Dubon, as you heard Julia say, still trying to nurse that hamstring and should be hopefully ready to go by Friday. That went up for a ball, two and one. Jolt's playing in right field. Chaz McCormick had a little issue with the back flaring up on him. So Jolts getting the start in right. Jolts, Yiner, Diaz, and David Hensley here against Canning in the second inning. Corey sends one to right field, playable for Hunter Renfro, backs up a few steps and puts it away. Jolts retired for the first out. Now these injuries that the Astros are feeling right now, just enough to keep guys out of lineups. Hopefully able to recover quickly. Dubon will really benefit from the day off today, day off tomorrow. May not benefit from getting on a plane. <laughs> Get a little dehydrated, but should be all right, hopefully, in a couple of days. Kind of shortens your bench when you know those things, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a it's a short bench today for sure. You will probably see these nine guys play the whole nine innings today for the Astros. Yiner Diaz getting a start at first base. 
Yiner fouls went out of play. First off day of the season for Jose Abreu. Abreu's had a couple of DH days, but he has not been out of the lineup since joining the team until today. There he is, chilling out. Watching Yiner Diaz bat here with a 0-2 count. I finally got to introduce myself to him today. I caught him in the lobby. I haven't been able to find him on the field, so I finally got to sit down and chat with him a little bit. Great guy. Great guy. Great guy who's obviously wanting to contribute more than he has so far at this point. So maybe just a day plus tomorrow to regroup. Give Yiner his first major league start at first base. It's kind of a big day for Yiner. We've seen some flashes of that bat showing some power. He has been a little bit aggressive, but you can't blame him for that when you're not playing every day. You want to try and get about two or three hits every at bat when you're not playing every day. And I think this guy, this is a guy that could benefit from consistent ABs, and now he gets a chance to show some athleticism over there at first base. Down in the count here, one and two. Checked his swing on a pitch away, two and two. Well, Yiner last year combined for 25 minor league home runs. I feel like he is close to getting that first one at the big league level. Maybe today. And a couple of good drives to the opposite field for extra base hits back at Minute Maid Park. Uh, that one waved and missed on the slider. Yiner down on strikes. First strikeout for Griffin Canning. Two outs in the inning. Bring up David Hensley. Hensley hitting a home run here on Monday night. Came into the game last night as a pinch runner when Mauricio Dubon left the game. Ended up with a single to right field. So he's two for four in this series, including that home run. Hensley takes one in the dirt for a ball, 1 0. Oh. Astros on the board first on a Jordan Alvarez home run, his eighth home run of the year. On the corner for a strike, one and one. Astros starting the day 18 and 18. We would like to see a little more production from their offense than they've seen the last dozen games. They have scored less than three runs a game for the last 12. So Dusty shaking his lineup up a little bit here on a Wednesday, knowing that tomorrow will be back-to-back -back days off for some of these guys. 96 catch at the top of the zone against Hensley. It's one and two. That shows head to Chicago after this game. They'll have an off day tomorrow. Then three with the White Sox beginning on Friday. That is on the outside corner for a call third strike. Canning strikes out the final two of the inning and has a one, two, three second. That's one week from today. All fans in attendance next week will receive a Fromber Valdez World Series replica ring presented by Oxy. To secure your tickets, go to Astros.com slash promotions. Anthony Rendon will lead off facing Christian Javier. Goes out to the first pitch and hooks one plenty deep to be a home run, but he got in front of it for a long foul. And don't hit his first home run of the season in Sunday's game against the Texas Rangers. He has been primarily in that cleanup spot for the Angels. They have just three home runs in the cleanup spot this year. But Rendon singles in the left field. That'll be a leadoff base runner for the Angels. First base hit allowed by Javier. Don't had a six game hitting streak snap last night. Starts a new one today. Now Javier will face Hunter Renfro. Christian making his eighth start of the year has faced the Angels eight previous times. Four as a starter and four out of the bullpen. Renfro goes after the first pitch and misses the slider 0 and 1. Astros only needed one inning out of their bullpen yesterday with Ryan Presley pitching the ninth behind Fromber Valdez. Brilliant. Eight innings of work. So with the off day tomorrow, it's pretty much all hands on deck today for the Astros bullpen. And Javier would still like to go deep if he can. 
getting ahead 0 and 2 here on Renfro. Hunter Renfro acquired from Milwaukee in an offseason deal. Leads the team in home runs and runs batted in as you look at Fromber Valdez moving into the top five and earned run average right there with Luis Castillo. Baldy giving it a look and he'll run out of room. Love the hustle though. Day game after a night game playing both ends for Martin Maldonado. He likes showing the range. He does. Does a good job of bouncing out behind home plate, catch some of these fly balls. Always working hard for his pitcher. This one just kind of lofted back towards that screen. Plenty of room here at Anaheim, too. One of those old school type ballparks, a little more distance behind the catcher. He was running right towards the Scott Boris suite. Usually on hand here for a lot of Angels games. Jordan Alvarez all the way back. He's near the wall. That is gone. An 0-2 pitch. Hit out to left into the Astros bullpen. Hunter Renfro with his team leading 10th home run of the year. Drives in RBIs 25 and 26. It's 2-1 Angels. That was just a hanging slider. Renfro got a hold of it and was able to launch it out of here. See this one just kind of float and stay up on that inner third. Mar Maldonado knew it immediately. But that's one of those pitches that just got away from Christian. Renfro had been 0 for 6 with three strikeouts against Javier before that home run. Now Brandon Drury will bat. Sixth home run that Javier's given up this season. Four of the six, two right handed hitters. Those are pitches out of the pitcher's hand that you can just, if you had a fishing line connected to it, you'd start reeling that thing back in as soon as you possibly could. The pitch in any count was not a good pitch, but especially when you're ahead 0 2. Now he's missed with the first three to Brandon Drury. That's yeah, one thing to lose a hitter on a bad pitch, but then to give up that two strike home run makes it a little bit tougher. Trio swinging his Drury, sends the fly ball to center field. Jake Myers puts it away for the first out of the inning. That pitch arsenal for Christian Javier. Stack has 3D powered by Google Cloud, showing you the four seam fastball slider. That's primarily what he will throw to right handed hitters. That slider is the one that stayed up and got hit out. When it's good, it's very good. Sub 200 average against for right handed hitters. Left handed hitters will see something very similar. Just that knuckle curve will ramp up a little bit, try and slow things down with that break. Matt Dice the hitter. Dice was the catcher in the game on Monday. Had the night off yesterday, but came into the game as a replacement after Chris Oakey was taken out for a pinch hitter in his first Angel start. Catch at the top of the zone, one and one. Avi started the first game of this road trip. Astros winning 6 4 against Seattle. On Friday night up at T-Mobile Park in Seattle. Javier did not factor in the decision as the Mariners came back to tie that game at four after Javier left with a lead. Another top of the zone strike that counts two and two on Thice. I started out a little slowly, but he has been red hot lately, hitting 433 in the last two and a half weeks. Has that average up to 310. 
And he sends one into shallow left. Jordan coming on. He won't be able to get there. Thice flares one into left field for a base hit. He's a one out base runner. Third hit of the inning for the Angels. Tough break for Javier. He actually made a good pitch on that fastball in and tied up Matt Thice, but he dropped it into left field just in front of Jordan. So now Christian going after Gio Urshela. Urshela has a couple of base hits in this series. Had a single in the game Monday, a single last night. Urshela has 34 singles of his 37 hits this year. Urshela was acquired by the Angels from Minnesota on November 18th this offseason. Which is right around the same time, about 10 days apart from when the Astros signed Jose Abreu. Angels were one of the teams rumored to be interested in Abreu this offseason. Urshela, they fear, would play a lot of different defensive positions. But over first base now with Zach Neto being called up. As he misses that pitch, it's one and two. That and the addition of Brandon Drury. So you have some guys that can be versatile and move around that infield. And I'm sure some of it was probably protection, protection for Anthony Rendon over there at third base, who's had some injury history while be, being an angel. But Gio's done a good job going from corner to corner. I'm sure he could play up the middle if he needed him to. But Drury doing a good job at second base. This one on the ground could be two. Bregman to Hensley for one. The return throw wide. Staying on the bag, Yiner Diaz, and they turn the double play. Urshela hits one to third, and Diaz held the bag on a throw that was a little bit towards the right field side of the bag for the double play. See if the Angels challenge. And no challenge is indicated. That means that'll be an inning-ending double play. Three hits, two runs. The Angels take the lead, two to one. First base got tested early. He did. He had a lunge for that throw from David Hensley. Somehow, some way, kept a portion of that spike on that bag. Ooh, that was incredibly close. A little surprised the Angels didn't challenge that. Did her Shelly hit first base? <laughs> he might not have hit first base either. Did either guy step on the bag? There was some kind of phobia over there. Looked like Urshela is big enough. Urshela hit his foot in front of the bag, and I'm not sure if Yiner <laughs> stayed on the bag. <laughs> but either way, the Angels did not challenge. And the Astros end up with a double play. Here's Jake Myers. See Jake's road numbers on the year. Playing back-to-back -back days, he has now started 22 of the Astros' last 23 games in center field. Chaz McCormick started. The game here on Monday night against the lefty. Jake back in there against the righty Shohei Otani last night against Griffin Canning today. Patrick Sandoval was the starter on Monday, the lefty for the Angels. It'll be Jake, Martin Maldonado, and then the top of the order, Jeremy Pena. Canning tried to get a chase and Jake held up two and two. Canning this year coming in with a 5 3 1 ERA. Most of the damage done against him has been in the first inning. Six of his 13 earned runs, including today's home run by Jordan Alvarez, in the first inning against Canning. Top of the zone strike. That top of the zone, that borderline pitch has been called for both sides a strike. And Myers goes down for the third strikeout for Canning. That one may have barely got down and caught this couple of seams on the top of that zone, but you're right, Edwin Jimenez is really giving the top portion of that zone to both sides now. Martin Maldonado, Julia mentioned right before the game about his recent run. He has six hits in his last six games, hitting over 300 during that stretch. Had the big blow yesterday, a two run home run against Shohei Otani in the fifth inning that gave the Astros a two to one lead. And Baldy continues to hit well. 
Line drive the other way to right field. He'll be a one out base runner. Second hit of the game for the Astros as Maldi with a base hit to right. Maldi showing some good swings. Going deep to the pull side. Here he gets a pitch on the outer third, just goes with it, hitting it hard over the second baseman's head. That was a great swing. Stayed on that slider beautifully. Yeah, this past week have been his best at bats of the season for sure. Here's Jeremy Pena. Pena grounded out on the first pitch he saw right up the middle. JP takes one off the plate, ball one. Off a couple of pitches off that outside corner. Good for Jeremy. Works himself into a 2 0 count. Interesting if Canning gives in with the fastball right here or tries to throw that slider in the fastball or at least a hitter's count. Used to be fastball counts <laughs> back in the olden days. Yeah. Still should be, but you never know. There's a changeup. How about that? So Payne now with a 3 0 count. We mentioned Alex Bregman's success against Griffin Canning. He's on deck. Sees a strike three and one. He knew one for nine so far in this series. Jeremy had a good series in Seattle first leg of this three city road trip. Popped up. Gio Urshela the first baseman looking for it in foul territory makes a nice over the shoulder catch. He was the only one that could get there. And he stuck with it for the second out of the inning. Commemorate the 2022 World Champions with all things gold. Check out the full gold collection, including jerseys, hats, and more at the team store and stock up for the season. Visit Astros.com slash gold for more info. Now Alex Bregman will bat. Breggy popped up his first time up. Takes the first pitch. Again, these high pitches are being called strikes. That one may have been a little further up than the others. 0 and 1. You can't keep climbing the ladder. At some point, it's got to stop. Bregman sends one to left field, hit pretty well. Back goes Ward. He'll reach up and put it away on the warning track. Bregman hits one to the track and left, but he is out number three. One hit, one man left on. We're through two and a half. Angels two and the Astros one. A league for boys and girls ages 13 through 18. Register your child for a tryout now at Astros.com slash AYA. We're going to see Christian Javier go back, back to work here and Think about his last time out. It was very good. The seven innings of work, the three earned runs for him. That was during a time where the Astros were having a lot of injuries to their starting pitching, and all he did was come up big going deep into that game. And then he told me yesterday that today, the goal being the same, go deep into the game with some of these starting pitching performances, not as deep as they would like, knowing that that could put some strain on the bullpen. Just a total team player, guys, in his mentality. And, and another thing that was great about that last start for him was his ability to to calm himself down after a couple of walks and just really flip the page turn the page and get back to work. Uh, we saw him do that last time out. It's just a very mature pitcher on the mound and in, in his approach and the mentality and definitely willing to take the team on his back to game. Yeah good to hear as Javier not a guy that Dusty usually allows to throw 100 pitches or more but he was able to get through seven innings last start against Seattle. That was the fourth time in his career fifth time in his career he's gone seven innings which is his high water mark of his career. So today trying to go deep into this game as well even though he's got a full rested bullpen behind him after Farmer Valdez with the great outing yesterday but Javi trying to be one of those guys you can count on because when you think about the other three guys who will pitch against the Chicago White Sox you've got 
JP France making his second major league start. Brandon Belak making his 10th major league start. And Hunter Brown, who's kind of the almost the veteran of the group, but he's only had about 10 major league starts. So you want to see Fromber and Christian be able to give your starters some length and help out your bullpen as Javier picks up his four strikeout, getting Zach Neto. And I just love that these guys know it too. They understand that they are the veterans in that rotation, so they've got to eat up some innings to be able to protect that bullpen that is so valuable for the Astros. And it's just interesting that in his last start, he went seven innings, gave up three runs, and that was a game that kind of got out of hand late. He ended up getting a no decision in that ball game, but that that last outing, if he can give you seven innings, keep it from three runs or under, you're going to be in pretty good shape. But I just love the fact that they have the mentality of I have to get deep. I got to find a way. And that's how you start to shrug off or start to adjust real quickly after some of those walks and don't let them get to you mentally. Yeah, Fromber had one of those games yesterday where he was just solid in terms of his pitch count all the way through 11 to 15 pitches in every inning until his final inning when he only threw seven pitches in the eighth inning. Jake Myers. Makes the play on Taylor Ward. First time Ward has faced Javier where he has not struck out in his career. That's a win. <laughs> now 0 for 8 with seven strikeouts. Well, that guy deserves to have a smile on his face, Robert Valdez. He was as good as we have ever seen him last night. That was absolutely, that was, that was probably one of the more fun games we've had to watch this season. We got some big hits. Then you saw Fromber Valdez just go out there and just mow through this lineup. And it was kind of fun to see him normally fastball curveball. All of a sudden, he got a feel for that cut fastball, and he went to it and just abused some of these right-handed hitters with it. That cut fastball looked great last night. Well, here's Mike Trout. Jim Javier's success against Trout as well. Struck him out his first time up. Trout taking a couple of pitches out of the zone, 2-0. and oh. That's a hitter's count. <laughs> fastball right down the middle. Against perhaps the best hitter in the game, and Javi beats him. It's amazing. Yeah, that's where I lose my job trying to explain that. <laughs> I mean, certain guys. It's just you know, there. You know, for Mike Trout, it could be the deception. It could be, you know, that long loose arm that Christian Javier has. But for whatever reason, he just picks the ball up incredibly late out of the hand. I mean, Martin just set up right in the middle. That's going to be a foul tip. It would have been ball four if Trout's bat didn't tip that pitch. Trout's saying it hit him in the hand, and he wants his dugout to look at this. It's tough to tell from that angle straight on. It could have been anything. But Phil Nevin wants to get an explanation about the call. The call was foul tip off the bat of Trout. Trout's claiming it hit his hand. Is there enough visual? Evidence to overturn it. That's what Nevin's going to try and figure out. He said, no, nope, play on. Yeah, but I think that's what Nev was trying to do is get out there, get a clarification on the actual call before they decided what to do as far as the replay review is concerned. And I'm not sure if it's enough there to actually say that it grazed it. And now the full count pitch. And Trout goes down again on strikes to Javier, who struck out two in the inning, a one, two, three, third for Christian. Alvarez got a three, two fastball up out of the zone, and he went up on attack mode. Brought the hands up nicely, barreled it up, and launched his eighth home run and 34th RBI with that one swing in that first inning against Griffin Cannon. Canning. And coming right back after him with a fastball early. Jordan now with a 31 game on base streak to start this season. It's the longest on base streak of the year in the major leagues, no matter whether it was to start the year or not. Sander Bogarts had a 30 game earlier. And there's that swing. Top of the zone, a little bit different arc to that swing for Jordan, but still able to get the barrel to it and launch that pitch 412 feet into the seats. 17. My bad. Sold him short. How about that? 417, and he was breaking out of the batter's box like he wasn't entirely sure if he caught it all. Got jammed and hit it 417 feet. The old wall here at Angel Stadium used to be that out of town scoreboard, which is now just a scoreboard. It's no longer 
in play and now you just hit it over the yellow line below that scoreboard it's good for a home run but Jordan hit it into the seats over the old scoreboard or over the old wall rather it's two and two Tuck and Jordan top five it's a nice little battle head to head Some big numbers today Tucker batting behind Alvarez we were wondering if when Michael Brantley was active, Dusty would consider going lefties back to back in the lineup. Not sure if this is a one day thing or not, but I don't mind seeing 44 and 30 back to back. I don't either. I think it provides a great deal of protection for Jordan. Maybe see some more pitches. It'll be interesting once there's runners on later in the game and see how it unfolds because having those two lefties back to back sometimes will encourage the opposing manager to get their number one lefty up to come in and combat these guys back to back but it also could backfire in the sense that they use that lefty earlier and later in the game these two guys come up again and there's nobody to face them and Jordan's got a OPS over a thousand against lefties which isn't too shabby yeah I mean the splits don't even dictate that you should bring in a left handed pitcher to these guys so Alvarez grounds out to start the fourth inning Here's the other lefty Kyle Tucker Tucker had a good series against Seattle five for ten with a home run and four RBI's looking for his first hit in this series he's 0 for eight against the Angels Tucker bounced out to first on the first pitch he saw today his first time up goes after another first pitch this one he get grounds into the hole between first and second Kyle Tucker last year might have hit that one into the shift this year it's a base hit with one out. This week on Astros Bases Loaded, we go inside the upgraded El Grande scoreboard at the ballpark, and Jose Abreu raises awareness for mental health. All that and more on Astros Bases Loaded after the postgame show. Corey Jolks getting a start back to back days. Yesterday he was in left field, today he's in right field. Jolks flied out to right his first time up. One for 12 on this road trip so far for the UH Cougar. Takes that strike at the top of the zone, which has been pretty much open for both pitchers today. It's 0 1. Jolt's first career home run coming on the road in Pittsburgh. And he hit one at Mid Maid Park in the last homestand. That one drops in for a strike 0 2. Tapper could be problems. It is as it goes through everybody. Tucker, great base running, sees that play in front of him, gets to third, first and third with one out. The Angels have struggled with their defense all year long, and that should have been at least gloved by somebody. Instead, it went all the way through to the outfield. Yeah, that's a tough play for the third baseman coming across that play. Really, Rendon, the only one that could get to that ball quick enough to even try and have a play. But a good job by Jolks putting that ball in play with two strikes, forcing the issue, and Rendon unable to come up with the pick. And how about the fact that that whole play was right in front of Kyle Tucker, and as soon as he saw it get past Rendon, there was nobody there to pick it up. 28th error, if they do call that an error. It should be a hit initially, but I thought they might give an error to somebody to allow Tucker to go to third, but so far nothing posted. So for now, just a clean hit to left for Corey Jolks. That's a ball that has to stay on the infield. Yeah, if anything, right? Just keep that ball, keep everybody from moving 90 feet. The double plate is still in order, but at the same time, you've got Yiner Diaz up there with a runner at third, less than two outs. Nice pop fly to the outfield will tie this ball game up. Yiner gets under it and skies one to left. Waiting for it is Taylor Ward. Tucker's tagging up. With his speed, he should score easily. He will. Throw goes into second. We're tied up at two on a sack fly by Yiner Diaz, driving in his third run of the year. Nicely done. Get a pitch early that you can drive the outfield. He actually hit it pretty good, 103.5 off the bat. But a bit of an uppercut at 48-degree launch angle. Ends up being deep enough. 
plenty deep enough for Kyle Tucker to come in and score. So quality at bat right there to tie this game up. And there's a case where the ball getting through the infield while not ruled an error cost the Angels a run. They lead all of baseball and unearned runs allowed with 25 of them. And that again won't be an unearned run, but it was a mistake by the defense that allowed the run to score. Yeah, you get the sense talking to Phil Nevin that a lot of those unearned runs have come back to haunt them in some of these losses, too. That one gets wow. away. Speaking of unearned runs, Jolts is going to maybe head to third. He's making a wide turn. He's going to go for three, and he is going to get there safely. A two base error on a pickoff throw allows Jolts to get all the way around to third. Great hustle from Jolty Cat. Moving well around there, and there you see that look on Phil Nevin. He's trying to contain it a little bit, but he understands how important 90 feet is, and Jolks got 180 out of this one. Love the fact that he dove back with his head up. He saw that ball get past the first baseman, knew he had a chance at third base, picked up his third base coach and Gary Pettis, and made it in safely. Pretty good fundamental base running right there by Corey. Error on the pitcher Griffin Canning, a two base error. Let's see if David Hensley can take advantage with a runner on third and two outs. Hensley takes a fastball up 101. There's some shaky defense here in the fourth inning, and we're tied up with the go ahead run less than 90 feet away as Jokes leads off third. Wide. The in and out, the width of the plate has been pretty consistent. I think it's been great. It's the top of the zone that's been the area where we've seen advantage pitcher today. That one's wide again, three and one. Jake Myers on deck if Hensley reaches. Also wide. Ball four. Hensley draws a walk. First walk allowed by Griffin Canning today. That'll put runners on the corners with two away. And it'll draw a visit at the mound. It's an interesting pitch selection right there. 3 1 slider. Yeah, why is the pitching coach going out to talk with Canning here? Now, word from Champion Energy. Jake Myers a chance to give the Astros the lead again. That's here with two outs and two on. Myers struck out looking his first time up. I mentioned Canning hasn't pitched very deep in any of his four starts. He's gone five innings three times, five and a third another time. It's only at 56 pitches right now as he works with two outs in the fourth inning. Jake takes one down and away. That's five out of six out of the zone since the sack fly by Yiner Diaz. It's one and zero to Jake. I command a little bit of an issue for Canning. He's pulling everything to that glove side away from right-handed hitters. That one bouncing in there. Two and zero. Oh. Good time to hit if you're Jake Myers. But we've already seen earlier in this game to a couple of right handed hitters where Canning will go into those hitters counts and throw in a couple of change ups, a couple of sliders. But with command being that far off, I wonder if he just comes back and tries to get him with the heater. Might be a good opportunity for Jake to sell out and get one to hit. Nope. Slider again. And again, a lot of these sliders and fastballs from Kenning, everything is up top in that zone.
Jolks on third base Hensley on first with two outs. And a ground ball towards third two hops for Rendon his throw is in time oh, Jake man. Byers just thrown out for the final out of the inning There's Astros dugout wasn't sure. I'm not sure too many people on this diamond are buying it. Mike Trout hasn't even moved out of center field. That is going to be reviewed and if this is overturned it's a 3 2 Astros lead. Calling it safe at Houston first is the challenging chief James the Hoy. First. And he makes the announcement that the Astros are challenging the call. We'll get another look here Blummer. Good play running in but Jake Myers moves well down the line easily beats that. Oh. Not even close. Nope. Yeah I'm glad we have review replay review to really reinforce that fact. That was. I'm safe. telling you Mike Trout from center field did not budge. Good for he him. watched the entire play and was like um no. Nope. <laughs> Good for him. There's the easy turn After review, over the call turn. on the field is overturned the runner is safe. Houston will retain their challenge. Day game after a night game can impact anybody. Yeah, that's a very good point. Sometimes there's a Lakers game before a baseball game that can impact people too. Yeah, I get a little distracted. Get your minds elsewhere. Sometimes you have to refocus on these day games and really lock it in, especially if you had a rough night the night before. So now it's a 3 2 Astros lead with Jake Myers hustling down the line. Get a stake on that. How about too. that? I'm not sure if Rendon could have done much more but it looked like he took just an extra beat in that transfer. He's not a guy that really comes over the top. He does just enough. He really reminds me of Vinny Castilla kind of like sidearm slings it over there but he was kind of upright the entire way. Didn't really go after that ball with much urgency but Jake can float. So now the Astros have regained the lead. Thanks to the bottom of their order. Tucker started it off the cleanup hitter with a single then Jolks singled through what should have been at least knocked down through the left side of the infield. And then a sack fly after that a walk to Hensley and an infield hit to Jake Meyer. So not like the Astros are punishing the baseball. That one almost ends up in center field as Canning's already committed an error in the inning on a pickoff attempt and things are getting a little out of hand. Yeah the ball control for the Angels right now is eluding them. I get it but at the same time it was a dangerous throw. Aldi with a single his first time up has a one one count here. And chops a foul it's one and two. TK Jake was getting down the line at twenty nine point eight feet per second. Excellent. That's moving. Good for Jake Myers. Smelled a steak and picked up an RBI. That is exactly right TK. Never underestimate the desire to not get out. Jimmy Herget warming up. We saw him warm up last night. Didn't get into the game. Canning now at 63 pitches. Oh, he hits oh, Maldonado. That'll load them up. Canning has been all over the place in this inning. Most of his misses, as you mentioned earlier, have been glove side, but that one goes up and in. Well, it makes you wonder if he was trying to overcompensate and change that release point a little bit but this fastball just runs up and in and just tears into that elbow guard of Martin Maldonado. He's used to getting beat up but not usually in the batter's box. Probably <laughs> <laughs> having fun with Gio or Shella over there at first base. Now Thice is going to ha have a little meeting with Griffin Canning. You wonder if this is a true meeting or if they asked him to stall a little bit as Herga continues to warm up here as Canning has lost it a little bit in this fourth inning. No, nah, TK, this is a stall tactic. They're just trying to make sure Herga gets enough pitches in there to get loose because the, we've already had one visit to the mound this inning. You come out again, you've got to change that pitcher, but I think this is just a leisurely stroll by Feist to try and get Herga ready to go. That's exactly what it was. Dice, one of those uncomfortable conversations, basically having to tell his pitcher, I'm out here and we can talk about whatever you want, but this is the end of your afternoon. 
So Canning will leave the game with the bases loaded. He had things rolling along the last couple of innings, but ran into trouble here, allowing five of the last six batters to reach, and he will leave in the fourth. Bit of a situation here in Anaheim. Top of the fourth, two outs. Bases are loaded for Jeremy Pena coming to the plate. He's going to face a new pitcher after Griffin Canning gets knocked out of this ball game. It's going to be Jimmy Herget on the season, a 6.23 ERA. He can bring a little bit of that funk with that sidearm delivery. Got a pretty good chase out of Jeremy Pena with that sweeper on the first pitch. Basically, fastball slider doesn't throw very hard, but creates a lot of movement with that funky delivery. Sidearm, real short stride. Some late break on that slider, too. So far, JP going after the first two sliders, falling behind in the count 0 and 2. And he does have a home run against Herget last season on a slider. He is two for three against him, but battling here down 0 2. Pena shoots one over the head of Urshela into right field. Two runs are going to score. Heading to third, Maldonado. He'll be safe. It is 5 2 Astros. Jeremy Pena, two RBIs. Jeremy got a gift right there from Herget. And he takes advantage of it. So credit to him for getting a pitch and a two strike count out over the plate. It was elevated enough for him to stay on that pitch and hit it the other way. Two two out RBIs for Jeremy Pena. In the days before replay, we'd still be tied at two, but an overturned call gave the Astros the lead, and now Pena adds two more runs to that. Here's Alex Bregman. Bregman takes a pitch at the top of the zone for a strike, 0 1. Alex has popped up and flied out to deep left. He's the ninth batter of the inning for the Astros. The inning started when Jordan Alvarez grounded out to second base. At that point, the starter, Griffin Canning, had retired eight of the last nine hitters he had faced, but then it all went awry at that point. Beginning with a Kyle Tucker single. Some shaky defense, both behind Griffin Canning and because of Griffin Canning, adding to some angst in this inning. 1-1 one, one pitch again, top of the zones open all day. It's one and two. Bregman doesn't like the call, but that's been one that has been called on everybody today. Well, you understand that at least, you know, a baseball off the outside corner or off the inside corner feels more of a strike than a baseball above the zone. But Bregman knows his zone as well as anybody in the league. His own has been consistent today. That is very true, especially up top. Bregman sends one down the left field line. Long run, Taylor Ward, and into the stands he goes, and it's a foul ball and no play. Wow, I thought he gave it a really good shot. Paid the price running into the wall. Holding his rib cage area. Slowed down a little bit, but he had a pretty good amount of momentum going into those seats. Had a beat on it, got out there. The fans just kept him from making that play. It looked like he would have had the glove in the right spot. That's fair game for any fans. The home fans didn't help out their left fielder there. So Breggy gets another shot here with two strikes. Four run inning for the Astros as Bregman takes one off the plate two and two. Counts three and two, and Jordan Alvarez waiting on deck. You know Bregman should see something to hit here. Yeah. 
That is off the plate wide. Ball four. Alex draws his 24th walk of the year. Julia. League leaders are presented by Houston Methodist, and Jordan Alvarez has himself in a situation here with runners in scoring position, and all he's done on this road trip is deliver with runners in scoring position. Look at him. He's four for four. Just the uh, definition of clutch, guys, and the entire baseball world knows that about Jordan, but we're seeing it, especially here on this road trip, and already a home run today. However, just a solo. <laughs> you could change that with one <laughs> swing right here. <laughs> the count is 0-1 on Jordan Alvarez as he gets a timer violation against him. As the pitch is inside for a ball, 1-1. One one. Jordan was not alert to the pitcher at the 8-second mark. So the count's 1-1 one one as that first pitch misses. Jordan, 4-5 for five on the year with the bases loaded. And he sends one high in the air to left field. Taylor Ward is under it, and he will put it away. Didn't have that lined up exactly right, but he did make the catch for the final out of the inning. Jordan, in a rarity, the only guy with an at bat without a hit in that inning. The back to begin, you're going to see him at the top of the zone getting some swings underneath. They've led to four of the five strikeouts. One other strikeout with that slider so far in this ball game. As Christian Javier gets set to start the fourth inning. Astros getting four in the top half of the fourth inning. Shohei Otani will lead off against Javier. Goes after the first pitch and swings through at 0-1. The strangest part about the top of the fourth inning when the Astros scored four runs, Jordan Alvarez went 0 for 2. Unreal. The other eight guys went four for four with two walks, a hit by pitch, and a sack fly. Jake Myers will run this one down as Otani flies out to center for the first out. So, an inning where Jordan makes two outs, the rest of the team goes four for four, and they score four runs. And the base is loaded. Right. After you said he was four for five, that's what's crazy is that one of those outs was made. With the bases loaded where he's been so good and then you add on top of that his runners in scoring position with two outs average and it's amazing he got himself out <laughs> basically yeah so Jordan who's been carrying the team all year actually has the team carry him for an inning he's allowed to do that he's human <laughs> he is. we think here's Anthony Rendon taking a strike Right, Jordan's numbers with runners in scoring position, runners in scoring position with two outs, they're all the best in baseball. Man, man. Now Javier all of a sudden has a three run lead to work with. He gets ahead of Rendon, one and two. Javi made one mistake in this game, it cost him two runs. Hung an 0 2 slider to Hunter Renfro, who hit it out for his 10th home run of the year. Bouncing in there, two and two. <laughs> Top of the zone, that's the strike. Anthony Rendon goes down looking. That's a half dozen strikeouts for Javier, two away in the fourth. Second strike out of the game on that slider. This one just comes down and clips that top part of the strike zone. We've seen both sides attack that top part of the zone and get some calls. Well, if you're Christian Javier, you like living at the top of the zone. Anyhow, it's a good day to have. It's a perfect matchup. Yeah. Good day to have that top of the zone being called a strike. Here's Hunter Renfro. Renfro now with 10 home runs, 26 RBIs, team leader in both categories. Angels didn't make that huge splash move in the offseason, but they added a lot of veterans to that lineup, including Hunter Renfro, Brandon Drury, Gio Urshela. Renfro 31, Drury 30, Urshela 31. 
last year. Renfro was with the Brewers. Drury played with Cincinnati and San Diego last season. Urshela was with the Twins after spending some time with the Yankees prior to that. And that's a strike, two and two. So all of a sudden, they have a lot of guys in that same age range in their lineup, late 20s, early 30s, with the exception of their shortstop, Zach Neto. Javier has missed on that last pitch. That's 24 out of the zone for Javier. That's the exact same total Romber Valdez had, having thrown 99 pitches yesterday. And it doesn't feel like Javi's that wild. That just shows you how good Romber was in last night's game. In fact, Javi has not walked a batter today until then as he misses up and in. That's his first walk against six strikeouts and a two out base runner. Stay connected with the Astros by following AT&T Sportsnet on social media for game highlights, player interviews, and giveaways. Find us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for the latest on the Astros all season long. Javi has walked at least one in every outing this year, with the lone exception being the Tigers game where he went six innings, only struck out five that day. We're meeting on the mound. As Brandon Drury will hit with one on and two outs. Drury flied out to center his first time up. Can't sleep on this Angels lineup. They have a lot of home run hitters in their lineup, including Drury, who has seven. Eric. Second in the American League with 50 home runs. Swing and a miss there, 0 and 1. Drury and Otani have hit seven. Trout has hit eight, and Hunter Renfro has hit 10. Doesn't get that call at the bottom. It's 1 and 1. Good pitch. Little slider down and away. Looked like he caught a little bit of that zone. Didn't get the call. Actually, the Astros are heading to Chicago to take on the White Sox beginning Friday. They have an off day tomorrow. The White Sox have a game after the Astros game today, and then they'll play again tomorrow, will the White Sox? So they'll have two games after the Astros play the final game of this series before. They go head to head on Friday. Astros will reunite with one of their former players in Chicago as Jake Marisnik was just called up. Timer violation against Christian Javier. The pitch was up. Either way, it was going to be a ball. Javi delivered it up, but he got called for the timer violation. It's two and two. There's a lot going on right there. Home plate umpire Edwin Jimenez popped out when he recognized it, tried to wave it off. Javier was coming to home plate. All these little frustrated. And the home plate umpire does not look at the clock. He has a buzzer signaling him when it clicks to zero. Now Javi misses up again, three and two. He just walked his first batter of the game, and now he's had back to back full counts. Of the zone called third strike. Javier with seven strikeouts strands a runner here in the fourth. Astros still lead by three. Another beautifully located slider gets the call on this one to finish off the fourth. Filet helping to fight hunger when the Astros load the bases. And by Gallery Furniture. If Made in America is important to you, shop Gallery Furniture today. Astros sent 10 men to the plate last inning. Jordan Alvarez made the first and the final out. The Astros still scored four runs, so Kyle Tucker, who got the 
scoring going with a base hit in the first second base hole into right field but now back for the third time today. Tucker one for two that was his first hit of the series his last time up. So face the relief pitcher Jimmy Herget Griffin Canning lasted three and two thirds innings today. Allowed all five runs on five hits a walk and a hit batter. Home run by Jordan Alvarez so Jordan went. Yard his first time up and went over two in the fourth inning as Tucker down on the count here one and two. Tucker goes down on strikes. Herget picks up his first strikeout. That's the first out here in the fifth inning. I bring up Corey Jolks. Jolks hit a ground ball to the left side that snuck through Anthony Rendon and Zach Neto in the left field for a base hit. Four of the five teams in the American League West coming into today were at 500 or better. Astros and the Mariners at an even 500 at 18 and 18. Texas leading the way at 21 and 14. And the Angels in second place at 20 and 17. The Angels were two games back of the Rangers. Astros and Seattle were three and a half back. Texas playing Seattle today in the rubber game of their three game series and the Rangers are leading the Mariners 4 2 in the eighth inning. Luis Castillo went five innings and allowed three earned runs in that one. One and two the count to Corey Jolks. Jolks sends one in the air to left field playable for Taylor Ward. Second out of the inning. Time now to play Name That Astro, powered by Reliant. Three clues where fly balls go to die. This angel was a devil on the base path, a baseball card caper. If you know who that Astro is, go to at ATT Sportsnet SW. Tell us who you think that Astro is. And hang loose for a little while. We'll reveal that Astro later in this ballgame. It's an easy one. I think. Yeah, I think people might get that one. Well, some people know about the baseball card caper part of it. Yeah, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. Here's Yiner Diaz with a 1 0 count. Yiner sack fly his first time up, or excuse me, his last time up. He struck out his first time up. Jimmy Herget just called back up from Salt Lake. Working his first game since the recall. Pitched in five games for Salt Lake. After pitching eight games for the Angels before he was sent down. Yiner on a one two pitch in the left field. That'll be down for a hit. Yiner Diaz on base with a two out single. That is hit number seven for the Astros. Took two swings that didn't look all that great against a couple of sliders. This one stayed up. He's able to get around it and pull it softly into left field. Kind of erases the uh, the memory of those two previous swings with the base hit. Yeah, it had a little reminiscent of the Jeremy Pena pitch. Exactly. Where it was up a little, and Pena was able to single to right on it and knock in two runs. Here's David Hensley strike out in a walk, a run scored. Fouls that one back. It's one and one. Yeah. 
Nice pitch catches the outside edge one and two. Astros five runs seven hits Angels two runs three hits as we play here in the fifth inning. And a call third strike on a breaking ball on the inside corner. Hensley goes down looking for the second time today. Hergen picks up two strikeouts in the inning. We're halfway home. Astros leading the Angels five to two. Matt Dice will lead off against Christian Javier, batting for the second time today. Javier delivers a fastball up high for a ball, one to know. Christian 68 pitches through four innings. I mentioned he's usually in that 95 to 99 range before Dusty Baker goes to the bullpen, so he might have a couple of innings left. Delivers a strike, it's one to one. Show scoring five runs today. Biggest offensive output in this series against the Angels. They were limited to three runs each of the first two games against Angels pitching. Angels have their bullpen going again as Jimmy Herget worked through an inning and a third out of the bullpen in relief of Griffin Canning. That one's off the plate, two and two. Dice has one of the three hits for the Angels. A couple of singles and a home run today against Javier, all in the second inning. But Christian gets a strikeout here. That's eight for Javier, first out of the fifth inning. Came to the inside corner for that fastball. That was beautiful, 93 miles an hour. Going smoke pass Matt Dice. His last three starts against the Angels going back to the last year. That's 32 strikeouts. That's impressive. 14, 10, and 8 today. There's the top of the zone strike that we all love, especially for Javier. 0 1. It's a beauty up there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, it's been it's been consistent, but it's been a pitcher strike zone at the top of the zone. Bregman makes the play on Urshela, who grounded into a double play his first time up, started by Alex. Two outs. See the games you want with the flexibility you deserve with Ast the Astros Flex Plans. It's Astros Baseball on your terms. Learn more and build your flex plan today at Astros.com slash mini plans. Astros are back home next Monday. It'll be a six-game homestand. Three with the Chicago Cubs. Three with the Oakland A's. The A's currently have the worst record in all of baseball. The Cubs have been hanging around 500 although they have lost three in a row heading into today. A's losing again today. Oakland has a record of eight and thirty. Wow. Mm. That's not impressive. Well, their run differentials like a minus 142. It's too early in the season to have that big of a run differential. Yeah, it's nuts. All right, Tapera warming up in the Angels pen. He'll get the sixth inning. Who? <laughs> Two and do the count. Lost today at Yankee Stadium 11 to 3. Oakland's now allowed 289 runs. That ball in the left field, Jordan will make the catch right around shoulder high for the final out of the inning. That's three consecutive innings without allowing a hit since the second for Christian Javier. Tapped one with a runner at third base down to Anthony Rendon at third base, but the speed at 29.8 feet per second beats out that throw. Originally called out, had to go to replay and see that he was saved by quite a bit. Eventually ending up at a base hit and an RBI for Jake Myers, contributing in that big fourth inning where the Astros saw four in the fourth. 
and then an overturned call led to that run plus two more in the inning when Jeremy Pena drove in two with a bases loaded single. So it's five to two as we head into the sixth inning and Ryan Tapera takes over. Angels right hander making his ninth appearance of the season that ERA at 6.43 seven strikeouts and two walks opponents getting the ball pretty good off him at 387 has a career 5.29 ERA in the regular season against the Astros. So we'll get the eight nine and one hitters here in the sixth inning Myers takes a called strike. Jake driving in his 11th run of the year with that infield hit that you saw hustling down the line at 29.8 feet per second. Off the plate for a ball one and one. To pair the third pitcher of the game for the Angels. Griffin Canning three and a third innings. Jimmy Hergen an inning and a third. The Astros heading to Chicago after the game. The Angels will be heading to Cleveland after the game. Both teams will have a day off tomorrow. Where would you rather have your day off? Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when it warms up there. It's supposed to be a nice day tomorrow. Yeah, it should be. I mean, there's not many U.S. cities better than Chicago when it warms up. Yeah, that lakefront is amazing. Two and two, the count to Jake. Now it's in for a ball, three and two. Picks up a strikeout here, getting Myers for the first out of the sixth inning. Now face Martin Maldonado. Speaking of Chicago, Tapera before last season with the Angels pitched for both Chicago teams in the 21 season, pitched with the Cubs for 43 games and then with the White Sox for 22 games. Face the Astros in the division series that year, pitched in three games in 21. Had some comments about things that he, had, in his mind, felt were still going on with the Astros, and that didn't sit very well with the team. That went up and into Maldonado, 2 0. And a Vladdy oh, shirt or a plumber? No, that's Vladdy. I wore number 11 with the Expos. Ah. That is a strong outfit right there. The hat and the jersey. That's old school. That is old school. Vladdy went in an MVP here for the Los Angeles Angels. You don't see that cap much anymore. No. Not two and one on Baldy. If I had only known, mm -hmm. I would have kept everything Expos. Just I could have retired on selling it on eBay or something. Nostalgic. Yeah. Underrated uniforms. Mm -hmm. That one's popped high in the air. That'll be back in the crowd. Giving it a look. It's nice, but a run out of room. Nice little catch on one hand, or with one hand off the bounce. Wearing a Griffin Canning jersey. Now we know what Griffin does after he comes out of starts. Well, do you call time here? His swing on a pitch away. Second straight full count for Tapera. The 
Uh, to Paris sent around the charity plate, didn't get anything put in it. Now he gets Maldi. Got him with a slider. Back to back strikeouts on three two pitches. Two away here in the sixth inning. Jeremy Pena, he's got one of the big swings today with that two RBI base hit in the fourth inning. Came on a no two pitch against Jimmy Herget. Changed the game from a 3 2 lead to a 5 to 2 lead as Pena takes one off the plate 1 0. Astros have really dominated this season series between themselves and the Angels through the years. Last year winning 13 out of 19 games against the Angels. The year before winning 13 out of 19 games. Pandemic season was a strange one for the Astros. The year before the pandemic season they won 14 out of 19 and then 13 out of 19 in 2018. If you go all the way back to 16, the last six full seasons, they have averaged winning 13 games in the season series. The Angels took that pandemic season six games to four. The Astros trying to take this first series. No longer do you play 19 times against your division mates, only 13 games now. Stavinsky warming up in the Angels bullpen. This one's off the plate. Two and two. He go through a lot of pitches in his last outing in Sunday's game against the Texas Rangers. A couple of days off in this first two games of this series, so we might see him get into this game. That is a timer violation to Paris frustrated, but we could see the clock go down to zero in the yep. bottom corner of your screen. And now it's three and two. Second violation in the game. One was called against Christian Javier earlier. Rodon had one too. That's right. Rodon had a batter timer violation. But I think this is another one of those ballparks that has the timer for the pitchers on the dugout. So it's a little bit tougher. You kind of, kind of move your head a little bit to go find it instead of having it directly behind home plate. That's hit well into left field. Jeremy Pena with back to back hits. Third straight full count of the inning for Tapera. He struck out the first two, and now Pena with a hit to left. Did a good job of going to get this slider. A lot of sliders from Ryan Tapera, but he stayed on it down and away and was able to pull that into left field to keep this inning going against him. Bregman has two hits against Tapera. Both of them are home runs. Two for five in his career. Times Bregman hit a fastball out against Tapera. Breggy has popped up, walked. He also flied out to deep left. Ball that would have been out at Mid-Maid Park as he swings through that. Fastball up 0-1. Bregman drew that walk in the fourth inning. It was his 16th walk of the season on the road against just five strikeouts. He's played 18 road games and has 16 walks and only five strikeouts, but he's down to the count here on two. And he goes after that slider. Overall, he's got 24 walks to 17 strikeouts, but his numbers on the road have been much better than at home this year. On the ground, slowly hit. Second baseman Drury will make the play for the final out of the inning. One hit, one man left on base. We head to the bottom of the sixth. Astros lead 5 2.
Trout up there. Christian Javier, 17 swings and misses, 12 on that four seam fastball. A lot of them elevated the zone. That slider's been very good as well. Add another swing and miss. Now 18 with that last slider. He's starting out with the two guys that might have some swings and misses in them. Taylor Ward and Mike Trout have never done anything against Christian Javier, including today. They are a combined 0 for 16 with 13 strikeouts. Taylor Ward finally put a ball in play against Javier his last time up. He had been 0 for 7 with seven strikeouts prior to that. He flied out to center in the third. And he sent one up our way. Yes! TK with the catch. Got That's one. my boy right there. High five. Thank you, Gooby. That was outstanding. That was an easy one. TK, man, that was great, dude. Sometimes they don't. So proud of you right now. Sometimes when they loop back, it gives you a chance. Swing and a miss. Ward goes down on strikes again. It was right into the bread basket. I didn't know if you were going for it. It was kind of right well, I here. I didn't want to get in your way because if I get in the way, then all bad things happen. But you, you made the grab. There you go. We got our first. I think first one since I've worked with you. Yeah. Well, I have You've one. Now you have right. one. Yeah. That one was much easier. Mine is. Mine was much stickier than yours. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Remember who was pitching that Trevor day. Bauer. Yes. Yes. There you go. Look at that little mark on the ball. That's where that, that's where the barrel came through. How about that? That was awesome. It's like I'm so happy for you right now. This is good because is that the first one you've caught ever? No. Okay. Got one at uh, back at Shea back in the day. Oh, I worked wow. for the Mets. Had a couple over the years, but this first one is a Nationals broadcast. It's outstanding. Street cred's just going through the roof. Well, it's unique because it's actually one that. Taylor Ward put his. <laughs> no, <laughs> seriously, he's probably going to want that one back. <laughs> he's going to come up That's here not asking right. for that. That's not right. I'm sorry, Taylor. No, you're not. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's more of a compliment to Christian. It is. Now another guy who has struggled to make contact against Javi and continues. It's unbelievable. It is remarkable. It feels it? like Christian Javier could throw Mike Trout a hundred fastballs and he might just not. Just kind of tell him. Yeah. And Trout just can't hit this fastball. That's back to back hitters fastballs up in the zone and not touched. How often I mean a three strikeout game for Mike Trout. And last time he faced him last year. Yeah. Over three with three abused. punch. And it's the whole it's the same thing. Another violation. Javi. No I think it was on Otani. Oh Otani gets yeah. a strike. OK. We're having some violations today. He'll day game after a night game. Yeah. yeah. I was really thinking about sticking my hand out there and trying to make that. I play. saw because it was right in between us. Yeah. But you gave me the easy one. Yeah. Thank you. I would have butchered that like that. I've been peppered up here in this booth over the years. This though. is a good booth for foul balls. Man. Yeah. They replace the drywall in the back of the booth every year. <laughs> so how about Hobby up to 10 strikeouts today? On the heels of Framber Valdez striking out a dozen. I think you called it earlier in the game. We were having that conversation at breakfast and you nailed it. You said it could be a big strikeout game for Christian. Well, just based on his past, right? 14. Well, it just adds up. I mean, what, three straight starts of double digit strikeouts now? Against the Angels. Yeah, 14, 10, and 10, his last three starts against Los Angeles. And with Ward and Trout at the top of the lineup, you knew that those guys just based on their past history might be strikeout candidates today. Two and two here on Otani Otani with pretty good numbers against Christian but he has struck out twice today strikes out the side in the six same three hitters he struck out the side against to start the game in the first 11 punch outs for Javier today. And Trey Mancini head to Minute Maid Park to take on the Astros in a three game series beginning next Monday. Get your tickets to watch this matchup at Astros.com slash SGT. TK. All right, Julia. Cubs adding some offense this year. They've done a nice job adding some pieces to the puzzle in 2023. The Astros with a five run, eight hit outburst so far through six innings, lead it five to two as we head to the seven. Jordan's had a nice day. To start, hit a home run in the first inning. 
And he batted in that four run fourth and he made two outs the first and the last out. Four run fourth and 44 didn't contribute. Takes a strike here. As he faces our old buddy. Devo Chris Davinsky taking over. In the seventh inning. Good to see Devo back in the show. The former Titan. Played college ball just up the road. It's a nice play by Urshela. Devo's there to cover. The ball had a chance to get down the line. Urshela made the play for out number one. They're going to peek at Devo and his season. He's given up a home run, three earned runs so far this season. But the opponent batting average here through six and a third innings is 217. His whip is at 0 0.79. Hasn't given up a walk and struck out five. The last outing was the only one where he allowed a run. He had gone three previous outings without being scored on. The Rangers got him on Sunday. Here's Kyle Tucker. Devo used to work in security here at Angel Stadium. He grew up just down the road. Pitching in this ballpark where he used to have a part time job. It's a called strike one and one. Vinsky making an all star team with the Astros. Another one on the ground. This one an easier play for Urshela. And he'll use Devo again. A couple of three ones here in the seventh inning. Time now to reveal our name that Astro powered by Reliant. We gave you three clues. The easiest one was that baseball card caper. Who is that Astro powered by Reliant? There he is, Gary Pettis, third base coach for the Houston Astros, five time Gold Glove Award winner, third all time with the Angels with 106 stolen bases. And he had a baseball card printed of him that was not actually him in the photo. <laughs> there it is. It was his brother, I believe, who yeah. put on his uniform, started to shag a little bit. And the baseball card photographer said, Hey, Gary, come over here and take a picture. His brother obliged. Great stuff. CP still third all time in Angels history in stolen bases. He watches Corey Jolt send one past him into the crowd and left. It's one and two. Devo's been battling some injuries the last couple of years. He said he finally felt like he had an offseason where he could train the way he wanted to. This past offseason and then. Back with the Angels here, his hometown team is two and two. He pitched with the Phillies and the Diamondbacks last year. Pitched with the Diamondbacks in 21 as well after leaving the Astros after the 20 season. That is a called third strike. The Devo strut that we're used to walks to the Angels dugout as he has a one, two, three, seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch time. We're going to head back to Houston. And for participating, we were asking who's the X Factor in May and early June, and Alex Bregman is going to be the winner. But everyone getting votes in this one. Fans wanting to see all these guys succeed. This next stretch of baseball, TK. Alex Bregman winning the Stroh Paul. 5 2 Astros lead the Angels, bottom half of the seventh inning. Bring Hector Neris into the game after a great start from Christian Javier going six innings, striking out 11. It'll be a Crawford Bach call to the bullpen, getting Hector Neris in there. 15 innings this season has a 1.80 ERA. Did a great job last time out on the mound. Right here a couple of days ago, had a strikeout through one inning, and had a clean inning throwing 15 pitches. Here to do the same here on Getaway Day. So one day after Framber Valdez has his second highest strikeout total with a dozen last night, Christian Javier with his third highest strikeout total of his career. He struck out 14 Angels last year in July. This one a little soft pop up to short. One pitch, one out. Jeremy Pena makes the play on Rendon. Javier also had 13 strikeouts in that no hitter game at Yankee Stadium, and today his third highest total with 11. Hey, did a great job. He's comfortable out here facing this lineup. He's got great history against some of these hitters, and he continued to build on that. A lot of swings and misses at the top of the zone to get things going. Gave that hat trick to Mike Trout. 
piled up strikeouts throughout the course of the game. Only one walk to go with those 11 strikeouts. Very good ratio. The combination of the top two guys in their order, Taylor Ward and Mike Trout, are now 0 for 18 with 15 strikeouts. Wow. It's unbelievable. Dang. It's aggressive. It is to the point where, you know, next time I assume Bill Nevin will see Christian Javier <laughs> again this year, you might not play one of their, both of those guys because they just don't see the ball well out of his hand. Hunter Renfro saw the ball well on a hanging slider on a no two pitch. The only mistake really that Javi made all day. Yeah, it was just a hanging slider that Renfro got to. Hit a two run home run in the second inning. One of just three hits allowed by Javier. There's one inside for a ball three and one. Again the width of the plate has been pretty solid just the height of the plate today for Edwin Jimenez has been advantage pitchers on the high strikes. Renfro's walked in addition to his home run today. And that one at the bottom of the zone the Astros get the benefit of that calls three and two. Jimenez hears it from the Angels dugout. That one has not been a strike most of the day. Javier walked one. It was Renfro with two outs in the fourth inning. That's the spot right there where you anticipate the potential for that called strike. Now, word from Fubo. Watch AT&T Sportsnet with Fubo TV. Try free. Yesterday the Astros went nine innings of baseball where they did not allow a runner to the first two hitters in any inning. That Renfro walk here with one out just the second inning today. Where Astros pitching did not retire the first two batters of the inning. Brandon Drury the batter. He flied out to center and struck out. If you're wondering why Javier left the game he was at 93 pitches and we mentioned he doesn't usually go to 100 pitches in any start. So Dusty's like it doesn't make sense to start it with 93 at the beginning of the inning. His last half dozen starts he's been between 94 and 99 pitches. Today struck out 11 with just 93 pitches needed. And your bullpen's in good shape. You mentioned it earlier in the game with the Astros having that day off tomorrow. You might have a couple more guys available to go to. Now one on the ground. Bregman to Hensley and Hensley with the turn for the double play. Second double play turned around the horn today for the Astros. Hector Neris works around a one out walk with that double play. We head to the eighth still 5 2 Houston. Southern California on a beautiful Wednesday afternoon temperature getting up to 70 degrees today as Yiner Diaz leads off here in the eighth inning Chris Davinsky back out for a second inning of work Yiner one for two with a sack fly today getting a chance to start at first base and play first base at the big league level for the first time in his career Evo has thrown a lot of strikes here nine out of twelve since coming out of the bullpen he gets ahead 0 and two. Bouncing in there one and two. Diaz goes down on strikes. That's a couple of strikeouts for Davinsky and one out in the eighth. The Shiner spotlight falls on. Baggy. Actually had a pinch hit home run in this ball game back on May 10th in 1992. Tied things up in the eighth. Pushed him into extra innings. He's always got some highlights out there in Pittsburgh. He hits this one for the go ahead homer in that ball game in the 10th inning. Davinsky gets another out. David Hensley lines out to right field for the second out of the inning. And Hensley now 0 for 3 with a walk and a run score. That'll bring up Jake Myers. Jake takes one on the outside corner for a strike.
Davinsky pitched three games with the Phillies last year did not appear in their postseason roster he was pitching for them late in the season. He was on the roster for their clincher at Minute Maid Park when they clinched the playoff spot. So he'll get a National League championship ring that one goes through Davinsky but right there is Drury. Myers who had an infield hit with his speed earlier can't beat that throw to the right side so Davinsky retires all six batters he faces we head to the bottom of the eighth five two Astros. Toyota how about a pretty good run last season from May 2nd to May 13th the Astros won an 11 game win streak. The team ERA was 0.91. Remember last season that pitching staff got off to an electric start, really picking up some of the offense and led to some close games, some big wins. 187, the opponent batting average, five shutouts in that 11 games win streak. But nominal performance by the pitching staff, the run difference, plus 43. They're averaging five runs a game, 18 home runs in 11 games. Batting average with runners in scoring position. All those numbers in the right spot if you're going to go out there and smash for almost two weeks for the Houston Astros. Great pitching and timely hitting. Well, it's quite a run as the Astros have a 5 2 lead today and go back to their bullpen for Brian Abreu. Good guy to go to. Brian Abreu's having himself a very good season as well. Comes into this ballgame with a 1.56 ERA. This will be his 18th appearance workhorse out of that bullpen for Dusty Baker. Here's the rest of the numbers on the season. Bottom third of the order due up for the Angels. Matt Dice, Gio Urshela, Zach Neto. There you gets a swing and a miss. Nothing new there. He's got the third highest whip percentage in all of baseball coming into today at 43.8%. Only Felix Bautista of the Orioles and Trevor Richards of the Blue Jays ahead of Abreu's percentage. Two and one. Dice one for two with a single. Had one of the three hits against Christian Javier. Brayu evens up the count of two apiece. Astros got a run in the first on Jordan Alvarez with a solo home run and then four in the fourth. The Einer Diaz a sack fly to tie it. Jake Myers an infield hit to put the team in the lead. Swing and a miss. Dice goes down on strikes. Dozen strikeouts for Astros pitching the first for Brian Abreu went away in the eighth. Stream every out of market MLB game now available at a new low price starting at $119.99. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Gio Urshela has twice grounded out to third, once into a double play. He pops a foul out of play, it's 0 1. Astros trying to push their record back above 500 and even up this road trip at three games apiece. Trying to go into the off day tomorrow with a W before the weekend series against the White Sox. Big swing, no contact. Or Shella misses 97. It's 0 2. Slipped a little bit on that swing. It's a little uncomfortable. That one I wouldn't have gone for. That would have been a tough play. That was coming back hot and way too low. Shella has a career home run against Brian and Brayu, two for five with a home run. The only guy in this lineup who has hit one out against Abreu. This year, Shella, not a lot of extra base hits, only three, two doubles. And a home run of his 37 hits. 
Most of the Angels offense in terms of home run production has been bunched in the two three five and six spots in their lineup. Cleanup hitter Anthony Rendon only has one home run but Trout Otani Renfro and Drury have been there leading the way with the power numbers they have 50 total home runs on the year. One and two on Arshella. And a little punch shot into right field for a base hit. Urshela has a hit in every series, three singles. Excuse me, a hit in every game in the series, three singles. And he's a one out base runner here in the eighth. Well, Bray, you will face Zach Neto. Neto struck out and lined out. Neto accounted for the only Angels run yesterday in a 3 1 Astros victory when he hit one out against Fromber Valdez. It was his first career home run. He's 22 years old, called up on April 15th, made his debut that day, and had his first major league hit April 17th. Last year at this time, he was wrapping up a collegiate series for the Campbell Camels at Winthrop. And here he is hitting a home run against Framber Valdez a year later. Really the only guy who did anything against Framber. Yeah, that is true. First guy from the 22 draft to make the major leagues. Down on the count here 0 and 2. It's now 1 and 2. Yeah, this young man right here forcing David Fletcher to get sent out. Fletcher still has that multi-year contract that he is getting paid for down in Utah with Salt Lake City Bees. A little flare to right. Jolts coming on. He'll make the play. Corey Jolts with a backhand play for out number two. Now a word from Woodlands Church. At Woodlands Church, there's a place for everyone. We don't have all the answers, but we're looking to the one who does. Two outs, runner on first. Top of the order, Taylor Ward. Ward just excited at somebody other than Christian Javier. No doubt. So is the guy on deck. Yeah, Mike Trout as well. No, Abreu can be nasty. Those guys did not enjoy their day against Javier today. Combined 0 for 6 with 5 strikeouts. Although Ward against Brian Abreu, much the same 0 for 3 with 3 strikeouts in his career against Abreu. He does have a walk against him. 1 1 to count. Astros back here in Anaheim against the Angels right after the All-Star break. That well, should be pretty nice for some of the guys. They'll be up there in the great Northwest for that All-Star game. So we'll be in that time, same time zone. Just take a nice trip down the coast. We know the manager and the coaching staff will be in Seattle and then whoever else is named to the All-Star team for the Astros. And then three game series here beginning July 14th. Ward misses that pitch on slider. It's two and two. In the interim, the Astros will be here in Southern California taking on the Dodgers in late June. Weekend series against LA, June 23rd, 24th, 25th. Two and two, the count to Taylor Ward, runner on and two outs. Swing and a miss. Ryan Abreu picks up two strikeouts in the inning. Astros pitching with 13 strikeouts. We are through eight, five, two, Houston. Really good ball players down in the minor leagues for the Houston Astros. Justin Dearden having himself a great week. He was named PCL Player of the Week, Astros number seven prospect. And you've also got Drew Gilbert being promoted from high A to double A in Corpus Christi. So that Drew Gilbert move is moving rapidly. He is Astros number one prospect in the minor leagues. 
another excellent outfielder. That's one thing the Astros have a plethora of is very good hitting outfielders and both those right there having themselves a good week as the Astros will take on another arm out of that bullpen for Phil Nevin. It's going to be the first time we're seeing Tucker Davidson in this series It'll be his ninth appearance. 16 and two thirds innings has a 5.94 ERA opponent or lefties hitting 3.18 against him. So we'll get Martin Maldonado then top of the order here in a 5-2 game. Well, buddy Chris Davinsky was very effective in his two innings of work. Debo retired all six batters he faced, and now the fifth pitcher of the game for the Angels. Maldonado has a single. He's been hit by a pitch. He's been on base two times today. Maldi now. Seven for 21, hitting 333 his last seven games. The Astros have so many outfielders right now. They have Pedro Leon playing a lot of second base at Triple H Sugar Land. Even a glut of outfielders at the major league level, although Michael Brantley not activated today. Michael sent back to Houston. Hopefully we will see him activated sometime soon. As Maldonado strikes out against Davidson for the first out here in the inning. Got to admit I wasn't mentally prepared to have Michael have a little bit of a setback and not yeah. be able to be on this trip and make an appearance. Now you're starting to project what the lineup would oh. look like with both Brantley and Altuve coming back and now yes. we have to put at least the Brantley portion on hold for a little while. Here's Jeremy Pena. Today, as we mentioned early in the broadcast, one of those days where you're probably going to see all nine players play the entire game. It's a very thin bench today for Dusty Baker. Dubon dealing with a hamstring. Chaz dealing with a back issue. Dusty wanted to give Jose Abreu the day off. Two and zero, the count to Pena. Jeremy, a couple of hits, his last two at bats. Had the big hit separating this game. It was three-two when he batted. With the bases loaded in the fourth inning, and had a base hit to right against Jimmy Hergen on an 0-2 pitch that made it a five-two lead. That's where we are now. It's been all zeros ever since the top of the fourth. It'll be a four-pitch walk issued to Jeremy Pena. That'll bring up Alex Bregman. Bregman 0 for 3 today with a walk. Still a good series overall. 4 for 11 against the Angels. Takes a strike. All right, Presley, who closed out the game last night, warming up here in the ninth inning. We'll have the 2 3 4 hitters do up for the Angels. Press is at the point now where he has thrown enough pitches. He's just kind of buying his time. Takes a fastball up one and two. Slowly hit ground ball to the left side. Rendon to second for one. And they turn two on Bregman around the horn. 5 4 3 to end the top half of the ninth inning. Well, Ryan Presley will be on to try and close out this 5 2 game and give the Astros a series victory when we come back. Safety is our top priority. And buy rooms to go. Get fashion, style, and quality all at low prices on every item. Every day. Bottom of the ninth inning. Astros up five to two. The Astros are bringing their closer into this ball game. That's Ryan Presley trying to go for back-to-back -back days of picking up a save. 
converted the last 23 on the season a 3.14 ERA in 15 games so far. Through that inning last night against these Angels, struck out two, picking up that fifth save on the season. He did it with 10 pitches. Got a great play to finish off that game last night from Jeremy Pena on a line drive. So very efficient yesterday. Going to be a little bit tougher today facing the meat of this order. Mike Trout leads things off. Trout against Christian Javier 0 for 3 with three strikeouts for the second straight year facing Javi. Trout, Shohei Otani, Anthony Rendon do up here in the ninth. Three time MVP fouls one back. It's one on one. All the Astros runs are four of the five Astros runs coming in the fourth inning. Nobody has scored since the top of the fourth. That went wide, two and one. Astros had a run of 23 consecutive travel days or getaway days where they won going back to last season until that was snapped against the Giants in the last homestand. Ground ball towards third. Hits the bag. Tough play for Bregman. That ball hit the third base by bag or Bregman might have had a shot to get Trout. Instead, he's a leadoff base runner. That would have been a tough play anyways with the speed of Mike Trout. He just buries this one down that third baseline. Got a little help from that bag. Staying down is actually benefited Bregy by getting at least a shoe or, or a glove on that one to be able to keep it around the infield and keep him at 90 feet instead of allowing the double. Shohei chops one off his leg at home plate. He's in a little agony. Shohei has not enjoyed his time facing Ryan Presley through the years. He is one for ten with six strikeouts. Right off that end step. Bit low, one on one. Shohei 0 for 3 against Javier with a couple of strikeouts. Javier struck out 11. He'll be getting the top three hitter seven times. Ground ball foul. One and two the count. Presley struck out Otani yesterday when he faced him. Got him with a curveball for a swinging strike three. I wonder if Yiner Diaz was enjoying playing first base until this point right here. <laughs> <laughs> Holding on Trout with Otani at the plate. It's <laughs> a good call. This ball hit high in the air, deep to right field. Jolts will watch this one. That is gone. Well, he didn't get him with a curveball today after striking him out yesterday with that pitch. It's now a one run game as Otani connects on his eighth home run of the year. 5-4 Astros. Talked about this being a tough part of the order. Didn't look to be a terrible pitch. This pitch is actually down below the zone. You'll see it on the replay. That curveball down, but Otani just goes down, gets on those legs, and uses that big frame to create the leverage and launch it out of there. 102.6 off the bat, 408 feet later two run home run to get this inning started. And so nobody out in the inning here in the ninth in a one run game now. Anthony Rendon the batter. Rendon grounds one towards the hole. Pena makes the backhand play. The throw is wide and Rendon is safe. Jeremy tried to make a great play but Rendon now the tying run on first base. It was a brilliant effort by Jeremy Pena. The throw was just a little bit up the line and Yiner Diaz had a tough decision right here to make and I think he made the right one by going to get that baseball and not trying to hold the bag. Josh Miller the pitching coach will come out and have a word here with Ryan Presley. 
Presley able to close out the game last night in a two run lead today with a three run lead he's given up a two run home run and now an infield single. Hunter Renfro has been on base all three times today he's the batter he's hit a home run a two run shot and then walked a couple of times. Couple of ground ball hits with a home run in between against Presley in this inning. Renfro takes a pitch that's called a strike. He didn't agree. 0 and 1. There's a base hit up the middle. Tying run to second, winning run to first. Four straight reaching against Ryan Presley here in the ninth. Three singles and a home run. The Angels choosing to not go away quietly. It was actually a relatively decent pitch from Ryan Presley that got shot back up the middle. Well, Brandon Drury, the batter. First and second, still nobody out in the inning. That one wide, 1-0. One oh. Baker looking on he doesn't have anybody else in the bullpen this is Presley's inning he has a choices but he's going to stick with his closer here it's outside for a ball two and one Presley would love to get a ground ball at somebody here. A foul, two and two. There's four guys on that infield that want that ground ball hit to them, too. And home run by Otani snapped a string of nine scoreless for Ryan Presley. Still looking for that first out of the inning. Three and two now. Not dice. On deck. Big pitch coming here. Astros trying to hold on to this lead in the ninth inning. Ground ball towards third. Foul ball. Bregman stepped on the bag. But that is a foul ball. Man, that would have been an awesome way to end this game. Triple play? Yes. Just foul called by the third base umpire, John Lipka. Clearly, Alex was trying to get that call, but it was in foul territory. Yeah, we all wanted that. I felt the same way Presley did. Big strikeout for Ryan Presley getting Brandon Drury for the first out of the ninth inning. Good slider. It's on that outside corner, but the depth on it gets underneath that swing.
Presley has had good success against Matt Dice 0 for 5 with four strikeouts getting him on a curveball all four times he has struck him out. Oh pop up on the infield Pena will make the play infield fly roll was called right before he made the catch. Out number two here in the bottom of the ninth. Now Gio or Shello will bat. Urshela one for three today has a hit in every game in this series. Had a base hit to right his last time up against Brian Abreu. Owen won the count. Four consecutive Angels with base hits to start the inning. Now Presley striking out Drury and getting Thice to pop up to short. And ahead 0 and 1 on Urshela. Ground ball slowly hit. Pena will charge. Makes the throw to first. Astros win it 5 to 4. Got a little dicey in the bottom of the ninth inning, but Presley. Manages to save the game for the Astros who win two out of three here in Anaheim and a nice bounce back after losing that first game on Wednesday. Yeah, win the series on the road. The Astros have been playing great baseball out here on the road in those gray unis. And today we saw another great start from Christian Javier backing up what Fromber did last night. 11 punch on his own. And then you got that game finished off and Presley had to work a little bit extra for that one but still a great ball game by the Astros. Astros lost Monday night bounce back for wins Tuesday and Wednesday. It'll be a happy flight heading to Chicago with the off day tomorrow.